just a moment, but you see the four-year or the three-year age advantage for Ortiz, a half-inch height advantage, an inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They weighed in a pound and a pound and a half under the welterweight limit and see that Andre Berto has rehydrated fairly normally up to 156, and Victor Ortiz has put on 15 pounds overnight to go up to 161. Now, before Victor Ortiz walks to the ring, let's take a look at a couple of recent assignments. May of last year against Nate Campbell, this is the kind of opponent that a guy on the rise like Ortiz will often see, a former belt holder who had seen his better days, now fading, fighting in a higher weight class than before. Ortiz easily handled Nate Campbell. And here's the fight against Peterson, December 11th. In the first two rounds, Ortiz was clearly physically dominant backing Lamont Peterson up, knocking him down twice in the second round. But by the closing three rounds of the fight, it was Peterson who was backing Ortiz up, and that appeared to be mental rather than physical. Now here comes Victor, who has been talking very tough coming into the fight. A part of the dialogue, Emmanuel, has been the notion that despite the fact Ortiz has been fighting as a junior welterweight, and Berto has always been a welterweight, that Victor is in fact, really, truly the larger guy, and that gets a little bit more substantiation from the fact that unofficially, he'll go into the ring five pounds heavier than Berto tonight. But through the long course of their careers, and going back to when they were amateurs, which one really is the larger man? Well, back in the amateurs, I'm going back to even 11 years ago, Andre Berto was fighting at 156 pounds. He won quite a few championships as a junior Olympic guy at 16 and over, and all the same, when you look at Ortiz fighting at 132, now even though Ortiz is heavier coming into the ring, I think the fact that Berto has been used to fighting heavier opponents may be a big factor in the fight. Again, it bears repetition. When they were at the peak of their amateur careers, Berto outweighed Ortiz by 24 pounds. There are some recent results for Ortiz. And now he awaits the entrance of Andre Berto. This outfit looks like he's trying a little too hard. Just he's a to part of the, yep, he's <laughs> a part of the Ventura County Colony of Fighters, Larry Merchant. And now, let's take a look at Andre Berto, sixth defense of the welterweight title belt that he holds, but he has been criticized for the level of opposition he's faced, and there's a particular reason why that criticism continues to this day. Last year, Berto in April, knocked out Carlos Quintana, a guy whose biggest moment is always mentioned. He beat Bo Williams in the first assignment. Not often are you told that Williams knocked him out in the first round of a rematch. And then after the knockout of Quintana later in the summer, or rather in November, Berto had Freddy Hernandez on the undercard of a pay-per-view in Las Vegas, and in the first round, hit him with that clean shot and knocked him out. Larry, had he gone through with his fight against Shane Mosley, which was scheduled in, September, in January of last year and was wiped out because the earthquake in Haiti became a much higher priority for Berto and his family, we might not be talking about a lack of quality opposition if that had happened. That's true, but it's also true we might not be talking about an undefeated fighter. <laughs> Berto's father behind him. He fought in the Olympic trials for the United States and was disqualified as the result of what was de deemed to be a holding violation uh, in the Olympic trials. And then Emmanuel went and fought in the 2004 Athens Olympics for his native country, or his family's native country, I should say, of Haiti. Yes, he did. And, and he did. It's so unfortunate the way he ended up in such a strong weight division in the Europe Olympic trials. He had a lot of good fighters at 156 for the 2004 Olympic team. We had Jesus Gonzalez, who he lost to Juan McPherson. Lots of talent. And he didn't even win, I think, a, his first fight in the Olympics when he represented Haiti. But he had a solid amateur background, though. As well as Ortiz. Both of them were junior Olympic champions since they was like 10 years old until they was like 17 to 18 years old. You saw that Michael Buffer was in Manchester, England tonight. We're about to introduce you to a ring announcer you have not previously met. His name is David Diamante. Check out the amazing voice, and even more amazing, the hair. 
Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention. On March 31st, the world lost an incredible human being, Gil Clancy, International Boxing Hall of Fame trainer, manager, matchmaker, broadcaster, and member of the HBO Sports family. As a trainer, he trained some of the greats, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, George Foreman, Jerry Cooney, Jerry Quarry, Oscar Bonavena, Oscar De La Hoya, Rodrigo Valdez, and probably best known for his work with Emil Griffith and taking him to both welterweight and middleweight titles. As a broadcaster, he won the Sam Taub Award in 1983. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please remain silent as we toll the memorial 10 count for a friend to many of us and a friend to boxing, Gil Clancy. Rest in peace, Gil. God bless you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the MGM Grand here at Foxwoods Resort and Casino in beautiful Mashantucket, Connecticut for the main event of the evening, East-West Showdown. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Lou DeBella's DeBella Entertainment in association with Golden Boy Promotions. Sponsored by Corona, La Cerveza Mas Fina, and AT&T, Rethink Possible. Sanctioned by the Mashantucket Pequot Athletic Commission, Chairman George Henningsen and the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman. Supervisor in attendance, Mike George. Your three judges scoring this contest ringside, Glenn Feldman, Julie Letterman, and Clark Sammartino. Your referee, Michael Ortega. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the four corners of the world to the four corners of this ring here at the MGM Grand Foxwoods live on HBO World Championship Boxing. The fight starts now. <laughs> Introducing first to my left, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing multicolored trunks. He weighed in at an even 146 pounds. He has an excellent professional record, consisting of 28 victories against two defeats. He has two draws and 20 wins coming by way of knockout from Ventura, California, by way of Kansas. Ranked number five in the world by the WBC, Vicious Victor Ortiz. Ortiz. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He wears blue and gray. This 2004 Olympian tipped the scales at a ready 145 and one half pounds. He has a perfect professional record. 27 fights, 27 victories, 21 wins coming by way of knockout. 
from Winter Haven, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, Andre Berto. Berto. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Is there an exciting, must-see American fighter in the house? Stay in your corner. Fox. They were contemporaries as amateurs. They never knew each other personally. Ortiz has been throwing around very menacing comments recently, quoting Mike Tyson. Berto was amused. Both guys have come out throwing very hard punches to begin the fight. Very fast, crisp, hard punches. It, all the way around, the general footwork and the punches are coming very fast in this fight. It's almost like a fast-paced amateur fight. And you know, how do you expect the fight to go? Well, I think Berto is going to try to win back because he's more explosive. Probably one of the most explosive fighters that I've known. But physically, I think he's still stronger, even though the other guy, Ortiz, weighed in better. I think that the physical strength and maybe the mental strength probably of Berto may carry him through. But on the other hand, Berto has a reputation of being questionable in terms of his ability to take a punch. And if he's questionable in his ability to take a punch, then Victor Ortiz may well be able to exploit that. But so far in the first round, Berto is busier and down goes Berto on a hard left hand by Ortiz and Michael Ortega is not going to rule it a knockdown. He's going to say that Berto tripped over Ortiz's foot. Ortega immediately made the ruling. He's a good referee who's a former fighter and sees pretty well. Step back, watch your head. From here, it looked like the punch did it, but you may be right, Jim. Uh, there could have been a trip. It wasn't we're a clean out punch, but, replay, I hope. but it wasn't a clean punch. But normally, if you go down the result of a blow landing anywhere above the waist, and it did, even if it was a grazing blow, he blocked. He wouldn't have went down there, that didn't hit. Berto staggered again. Straight left hand by Ortiz. And Berto does go down in the corner this time. So now, Ortiz has the credit for the knockdown that he didn't get the first time around. Hey, we got Andre Berto has a whole new respect right. for Victor Ortiz's right, punching go. power. And Ortiz, and Ortiz can't uh, wait. Ortiz has come out here to prove hey, hey, hey. that he is a fighter inside as well as outside break, break. and has Let's taken go. it to Berto. I find myself surprised by that. I'm stunned. Berto pastes Ortiz with a big right hand. Ortiz walks through it. Keeps throwing. Berto blocking the shot. Ortiz is trying to get rid of him right here. This would be a very interesting fight. You know, Berto was known for being in these type fights in the amateurs a lot and surviving most of them. But I don't know what's going to happen tonight. Fight, fight. Let him out. He's back. faced some adversity holding, in his professional career, particularly against Luis Colazzo in a fight that a lot of people thought Colazzo might have won. Berto came behind, from behind in the late rounds to reel in Colazzo. Don't know if he's been hit with as big a shot as the left hand that put him down in the corner by Victor Ortiz. Berto said, the ring is a cold place where the truth comes out. What truth had we just seen? And he almost fell off the stool as he sat down. Listen, 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 don't worry about that shit. Okay, don't worry about that shit. You got to stay short, stay on your feet, all right? I'll stay in front of him, I told you. Here we see the left hand shot that landed by Ortiz, even though it wasn't a clean blow, to me officially was a knockdown. That was still, if he didn't land the blow, he would not have fell down. 
He did and here get we, back, here we, make yeah, contact the, with the front. And here foot. we end. It was a shot that came through the straight left, followed with the right hand, and that he was really knocked down at this time after this shot here. And this was called the official knockdown. The uppercut was part of the damage. The first two punches were also part of the damage. Berto was clearly wobbly and woozy at that point. Power shots in round one. Ortiz landed 22 out of 48. But you know, Ortiz is, is, is really sharp, a little bit more crisp. But Berto, is, as I said earlier, has been in these type fights and won them a lot. He's a very, he has has a lot of his back. Yeah, very explosive. And he still has a lot, a lot of fire in him. Yeah. And but I think to, he's hurt also still. We have to keep in mind that Ortiz has fight, been a fight. fast starter. Keep your punches in front. Keep in them in the, front. Let's his go. loss to Maidana as well as in the draw with Peterson. Fight. Let him out. Step he knocked back. Maidana down three times. Lots. Often forgotten in light of how Maidana ultimately got the better of him physically in the fight. Berto seems to be still hurt from that uh, first round. I don't think he's fully recuperated. But he's fighting and going at Ortiz from time to time and settling into a little bit of a rhythm now in round two. Well, already, this is a better fight than the last time two American guys got in in a showdown back in uh, January, Bradley and, Al uh, and Alexander. Certainly, Bradley and Alexander didn't produce anything like the fireworks we saw in the first round here. Good uppercut by Berto. Break, let him out. Break. Step back. Ortiz is trying to land one more big right break, hook. Let him out. Let's go. Step back. I think it's his break. most effective Listen punch, up, Emmanuel. Yeah, Ortiz is Let's trying go. to keep his punches compact, uh, taking his time. He's trying to land hand. one or two short punches. There you go, those short but compact punches. And remember, he's another southpaw who is basically a right-hander. Berto has a look of concern in his eyes, unlike anything we've seen during his professional career. Clearly, his confidence has been rocked by what Ortiz has brought in the first two rounds. It's not just his confidence, uh, Jim. It's, it's his own state of mind coming into this fight, that he was facing an inferior fight. Let him out. Let him out. Step back. And he can't think step that back, now. Step back. Step back. He landed in, a terrific in, right hand shot in the corner, but Ortiz took it. And stayed right there. That's pro that's as good a news for back, Ortiz as the fact that he knocked him down in the first round, that he was able to take that punch the way he did. All, all of Ortiz's punches are very There's good. the right shot. hand again, and now Berto has a knockdown. That's an official knockdown, but it was probably due to balance, but still it's an official knockdown. Ortiz glove touched the canvas. Seven. It was clearly the result Nick, of the punch. Nick, all right? All right, so now. Go. Three times clean. fighters have been on the canvas. Right. The first one was ruled a trip. The second are knockdowns, or the second and third are knockdowns for, respectively, Ortiz and Alberto. And Berto's landing his straight right hand, and you've already seen the damage it can do. What a start. At this uh, moment, both fighters are better than we thought they were. <laughs> Listen to what I'm going to tell you. He's throwing that left hand from far. Don't throw it that way. Get closer. Get closer and move to the right. Get in and throw. And only throw when you're on the inside and move to the right. Remember what we talked about. Step to the outside and put the left in with your head to the right. Remember? Here you see Berto step back, shoot a perfect time right hand, and at the same time that Ortiz was coming in with his legs half off balance. He's trying to catch his balance, but it was an official clean knockdown. I don't think Ortiz was hurt that bad when he got to his feet, but he was knocked down with a clean right hand. And that was the second flush right hand shot that Berto landed in that round. Power punches in the second round. Berto only 5 of 14, but two of them were those big right hands. Ortiz 16 out of 32. So Ortiz remains the busier fighter more willing to let his hands go, more fearless in the first couple of rounds. But Berto him, is starting to put his mark on the fight. Can he remember to duck from that right hand? Break, break, let him out, let him out, step back. Fox. Don't back him, don't back him. We wait to see if a boxing match will emerge from the slugfest which has taken place so far. 
but they're back to slugging again. But I, Berto is still never, to me, fully recuperated from the first round. Even though he landed the knockdown, Ortiz wasn't hurt that bad when he got up as compared to the way Berto was when he went down. Uppercut lands for Ortiz. Berto holding on. Ortiz is fighting like a young man possessed. Yeah, and his punches are short punches. Left hand lands for Ortiz. Berto wobbling again as he goes back against the ropes. Watch your head coming inside. Watch your head. Ortiz had a big first round. He's having a big third. Berto hasn't yet seen the uppercut coming. And paid him twice. Now he lands the right hand again. So you're free. Let's go. Watch your head. Watch your head inside. It's going to be a war of wills in there tonight. They are testing each other. Well, this is new for Ortiz. I've saw Berto do this many times, but this is something new for Ortiz, and this will answer a lot of the questions that we have about him, about his mental toughness. Uh, this is a, an examination for both of them, and right now they're both passing them. And nobody knows the way this fight is going to go. by Ortiz inside. Another straight left hand lands for Ortiz. Berto keeps motioning Ortiz in as if to say, come on, come on, if you want to brawl, yeah, let's you, really brawl. But you let the guy keep throwing those punches. He's playing the numbers game. Sooner or later, something is going to land. I think Berto is really still weak. His legs is not durable enough, and that's why he needs to rest on those ropes. Ortiz grinning at him, feeling it, enjoying what he's been able to do so far. And Berto alternating between looks of desperation and determination. Listen, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. All right, take a deep breath. Listen, relax. Right, relax. You're going to have to stay moving and shout those ropes. You hear me? You got a box. Touch his body, son, okay? Touch that body. Touch his body and break his ass down, okay? Stay off them fucking ropes. You understand me? Don't worry about this. This is still, everything's in the third round. It was third round. Although our tears didn't get to land a whole lot of devastating clip punches, I think this right uppercut between the girls is probably the signature punch of the entire round. Go in there, get on the feet, and listen and work. And listen, you're a fucking beast. Now show these people. Berto is, be Berto is being asked questions here he's never had to answer before. Through three rounds, Ortiz has already thrown nearly 150 power shots, landing 68 of them. That's an amazing start for him. Harold Letterman is celebrating his 25th year with HBO. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim. 28, 27, two rounds to one. Vicious Victor Ortiz. Jim, I gave each guy a 10-8 round for the knockdowns in round one and two. But round three, Victor Ortiz took it to Andre Berto laying on the ropes. I mean, I agree with you. I don't know why I kept motioning him in. Because every time Berto would motion for Ortiz to come in, Ortiz would wrap him with a good shot. Anyway, two rounds to one, Victor Ortiz. Ortiz is a man on a mission tonight. Yes, he looks like he's determined, focused, and... This is the type of guy that I hate to go in a ring against with a fighter when they see that look in his eye that I will not be determined. I mean, not be lose tonight. I will not be denied. And that's the way he's fighting. Two more hard shots. Another right hook for Ortiz. Another uppercut. He's landing these punches. Plus, again, Berto motions him in. What is that? that Manuel, why is he doing that? Why is... Berto is hurt still. He's still tired. He's using the ropes because he really his legs is not that straight right now. And he needs the ropes to hold him up. Hold himself up. But what's the motioning Ortiz in? Oh, that's, 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 that's a mockery thing. They act like I'm not hurt. That Muhammad Ali started that when he fought Joe Frazier. And that's something that fighters have picked up since then. But no, he's hurt. And he's tired. Big left hand by Berto. Ortiz walked right through it. There you see the legs. That's why he's in the ropes. 
because of the legs. If Ortiz would go to the body a few times, he might finish him. But he's throwing everything upstairs. Okay, listen. Watch and I get the feeling that Berto is kind of waiting and hoping that Ortiz is going to punch himself out with all this early aggression. Well, it could happen, but it's a hard way to win, hoping the other guy punches himself out by hitting you. took it a little better than has been the case with Ortiz's power shots before. Were it not for his second round knockdown, Berto would be falling way behind on the scorecard. Yeah, but his legs are still weak to me. He's still leaning against the ropes for support. Still motioning Ortiz in. As round four comes to a close. You're doing very good. Listen, let me tell you again. Again. You're doing good. But don't just throw the left slowly. Don't throw it slowly. Remember, this is a dangerous weapon you have. Throw it straight. What he's doing right. ropes, Bert. Listen. Listen. Start vouching. You hear me? Listen to me. 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 Okay. It's now start enough. bouncing and start boxing. It's not working. Deep start. Give me a deep breath. Give me a deep breath. There's a lot of chatter in Andre Berto's corner with Tony Morgan, the trainer, trying to talk to him, with his brother talking watch to him head. constantly between hey, the watch your head. The image of Ortiz coming into this fight that he he was more flighty than fighting. That he, he didn't have a real fighter's mentality. In four rounds, he may have destroyed that conviction that many people in the boxing world had. Ortiz is averaging 65 punches thrown per round. How will his stamina hold up? Is the move to welterweight a rejuvenation for him? Because in his previous nine fights, he's only averaging 45 punches thrown per round. So he's up the punch output by 50% while at the same time moving up in weight and fighting presumably a stronger opponent. Well, you know, sometimes whatever your plans are, um, what happens in the ring changes everything. And he went out to get Berto's respect in the first round and found out that he could stand toe to toe with him. Now he's trying to go back to, to more of his skills. Berto Lance. A few jabs, and then they trade another pair of big shots. Good, hard right hook inside by Ortiz. Ortiz still physically dominant into the fifth round. Ortiz testing Berto's legs once again. Let him out, let him out. Step back, step back. Berto is fighting this fight as though he just needs one punch to change it all. Well, he's been known for that a lot. You know, not in the profession, he hasn't been tested, but this is, as you said, Larry, this is a big test for Berto, too. He has never been in this type of a situation as a professional. Palazzo was a tough fight, but not with a young, aggressive guy who's punching with the accuracy and the power of Ortiz. He's never been in this situation. And look at the body that Ortiz has brought into the ring. I mean, the, the 161 pounds are one thing. Look at the, the lats, the deltoids. I mean, he is much more muscular even than the muscular Andre Berto. Yeah, it says that he should have been fighting this division probably. Like, some of the fighters are still trying to make weight all the time. But just because of opportunity to fight for a title, he went up and fought where he probably should have been fighting all the time. This was part of the mantra for Ortiz coming into the fight that he's been a welterweight fighting in the junior welterweight division. And right now, it looks every bit to be true. If 
fighting in the welterweight division where Andre Berto holds a title belt. The linear claim to welterweight division supremacy belongs to that man on the right of the screen, Floyd Mayweather. Not 50 Cent seated next to him, but rather Mayweather, who won the welterweight championship several years ago and has held on to it through all of his ring adventures since that time. Relatively inactive over the course of the past year and a half, and boxing fans wait to see when Floyd Mayweather will fight again. I swear to me, listen to me, listen to me, just listen to me, just listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. All you have to do is boxing and everything. You're going to be a champ, you're going to be a champ, you're going to be a champ. you won the round, you won this one also. Here you see Ortiz mixing up his combinations very well. Even though Berto has had a real tight defense, he's been able to find gaps to be on the outside, coming up between the gloves, doing a very effective job of shooting short, accurate punches. If you've just tuned in, it has been blazing and thrilling so far. Victor Ortiz managed to put Andre Berto on the canvas twice in the first round. Only one was ruled a knockdown. Berto knocked Ortiz down in the second round. Ortiz strafed Berto with a lot of power shots in the third and fourth. They've settled in to box a little bit more in the fifth round, but by and large, it's still a slugfest, and the slugfest advantages have still seemed to belong to Victor Ortiz. Ortiz told us a, a kind of <laughs> peculiar story of winding up spending two weeks of a vacation on the tiny island of Jersey off the English coast. <laughs> Nobody goes there for a vacation. Maybe that's where he found this. This is the best start Berto's had in a round. No, no, no. Don't hit and him. he now seems confident right. enough down, in his legs to try to fight in the center of the ring. Yeah, he, so he, let's see if he can get a fresh start in the fight. If it becomes a boxing match, Berto has faster hands. You think anything about Berto fighting one round in the last year? can be connected to this slow start for him, or is it just Ortiz? I think it's Ortiz. Ortiz's fight with such determination and with such short, accurate punches that it's very difficult for him to see. And it just, it, 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 it just so much determination. You know, speaking of 50 Cent, it was over there with Floyd Mayweather Jr. He used to box. He was in New York Golden Gloves, yeah. See him? Did you see him fight? No, I didn't see him fight, but I've, I've worked with him when I was training 50, I mean, uh, Eminem. He was, we was talking about that. Let him out, let him out. Glorious tradition, the Golden Gloves. Emmanuel, weren't you a national Golden Gloves step champion? Back, step back. Yes, but he was back. in New York Golden Gloves. <laughs> Just making the distinction for you. <laughs> yeah. Down goes Ortiz on a perfect right hand shot by Berto. Second knockdown of the fight for Berto. Five, and you can six, feel the fight. Changing perceptibly hey, in this right, round. Berto oh, stood in the right. center of the ring, feels confident in his legs again. Now beats Ortiz the punch with the right hand. Ortiz's legs are very weak here. Yeah. This is the sixth round. It was the round that he lost to Maidana in. Can he escape now? Hard right hand by Berto. That was a spectacular the shot. Great but Ortiz shot, was held shot. up partially by all, the rope. All is a land. One clean shot. He realized the clock is ticking out, so he's trying to get that one shot off. It's been a great round for Berto. Yep. After he was in so much trouble through the first five. His uppercut is good, too. Now Ortiz is going to... Oh, my God! Unbelievable. What a fight. <laughs> George Foreman and Ron Lyle stand aside. And We've you, got an amazing slugfest hey, in Connecticut. Here, and you can see go. Mike Otrego getting in position to stop right, the go. fight. And then Berto goes down. Time. Time. Unbelievable. Berto got a little bit overexcited, tried to finish the fight, left himself open, and Ortiz had enough. But he did what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to try to finish this guy. It just happens. Victor, you kept throwing the left. Don't throw the left by itself. Keep it up. 
Ortiz coming in, get hit, didn't do anything wrong. Split second, that's what's boxing about. And he gets caught. And the same thing happens later on in the round. When the and here we are at the end with Berto getting caught the same way. No one did anything or made any mistake. It happens. That's what makes boxing so exciting. Jaws are dropping all around this theater in Foxwoods, Connecticut. People are dumbfounded at what they're seeing. The phrase fight of the year candidate is perhaps a bit overused, but mark it down, baby. This is unreal. Power shots in six. Berto 28 of 43. Ortez 13 out of 32. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? Look at you. 57, 55, four rounds to two. Victor Ortiz. You know, Jim, let's talk about round six. Both guys go down, okay? Um, the winner in a round has to get 10 points. I thought Andre Berto, for about two minutes and 45 seconds, was doing more in the round than Victor Ortiz. I scored a 10-9. In other words, not 10-8, but 10-9 for, uh, for Andre Berto, because I, I thought that he did a little bit more in the three minutes of action. Four rounds to two, Ortiz. Watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. Let him out. All right, let him out. You're holding. You're holding. Watch your head. I asked earlier if there was an American fighter in the house who was going to be must see. Yeah. We've got two of them right now. So far. <laughs> They're earning their reputation the hard way. Let him out. Let's go. But you know, you're looking to see all this. It seems to be still so much energy and strength. In particular, when I look at the Watch legs of Ortiz as compared to Berto, it still shows to me he's got a lot more left in the tank. There have been five official knockdowns in the fight. Ortiz has been down twice. Berto has been down three times officially. He was also down another time in the first round. It was ruled a trip by referee Michael Ortega. And these are not flash knockdowns. These are not timing punches. These are huge shots which are landing for both fighters. Oh my God! <laughs> this is what you get with two young, ambitious fighters who want to be great men in this sport. All right, so I got a little overexcited. Producer David Harmon corrects me. There are four official knockdowns in the fight. I thought I remembered five, but. Who knows? There have been so many fireworks and so many things going on. In this type of a fight, you entirely get overexcited. Thank you. Does anybody think we've seen the last knockdown in this fight? <laughs> Not I. Not as long as they're throwing what they're throwing. Break, let him out, let him out. And you saw the wobble there by Andre Berto. Break, let him out, let him out. Widest round of the fight. Better than the best round of some fights we've seen. Listen to me, you hear me? I hear you. You're going to be the world champion. You're winning. You're beating him. You're beating him. Come on, be strong. A little more. Jab in his face. A little more. Work that body, man. You gotta hit him in the body. Right. Yeah, if you hit the body, you'll see a huge difference. Every time you jab, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Listen, Deep just, listen to me. Your box and this thing is beautiful. You stand there, it's it's hard. I don't want to see it, okay? You gotta use your, you gotta touch it with more than one, okay? Put them together. Let's go, it sounds to me, Emmanuel Stewart, as though Tony Morgan is trying to get Andre go, Berto to box. He asked him to jab. Let's go. He's trying to set back and try to catch Ortiz covered in with one perfect shot. But, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be very tough because Ortiz is so determined. And it, as hurt as he was a couple of rounds back, he still came back the next round fighting with the same energy and the same spirit that he had throughout the entire fight. There are a lot of ways for a fighter to make an imprint with his skill. 
But it's really difficult, isn't it, to change a slugfest into a boxing match in yes, history? Yes, yes. Once you get in that pattern, you can't break it up. It's very, very, very difficult. Well, especially because neither one is as fresh and their legs aren't as good as they were earlier. Berto likes to say that skills pay the bills, meaning boxing is better than brawling, but he's got himself into a serious brawl tonight. And he may get more recognition, Jim, if he loses this fight than for any fight that he's won. It's amazing that the power of the steel, even though Berto's legs seem to be going, when he punches, he punches with steel, tremendous power. The slugfest continues in round eight in Connecticut. Let him out, let him out, let him out, let's go. An amazing display of tenacious, hard punching by both fighters so far, but especially by Victor Ortiz. Ortega warning Ortiz for hitting Berto in the back of the head. I think Ortega has, has, has injected himself too much into this fight. Maybe he's gotten too excited by all these knockdowns. We're not here to see him. Step back. Behind the head, that's behind the head. That seems to be Berto's favorite punch he's trying to land is to just pull a little step back when Artez comes in and shoot the right hand. Both fighters seem now excited and energized by the nature of the fight they're in. Right, let him out, let him out. Step back, box. Berto, as you mentioned, had a history of these kind of tumultuous fights in the amateurs. Of course, in the amateurs, you have headgear on. Yeah. On the next Real Sports, an innovative program in which doctors donate their services to financially stressed former athletes suffering from injuries and addiction. In May 21, it's the rematch of the disputed draw between light heavyweight champion John Pascal and Bernard Hopkins. Also that night, Chad Dawson returns to the ring for the first time since his loss to Pascal, taking on Adrian Diakonu. Don't throw that one by itself, because he's catching you. Don't throw that one by itself. We always told you not to throw that one by itself. Don't throw that up by itself. Get in, use the combinations and the uppercuts on the inside. You're strong. Be strong. Victor, you've got to be fast. Be ballsy. Close it up. you got to do it. Hey, keep it clean, man. Keep it clean. Let's go, Fox. Of the 290 combined landed punches through the eighth round, 255 of them have been power shots. In other words, the two fighters have combined to land only 35 jabs in the entire fight. As we mentioned, the slugfest all the way. Andre Berto is settling into a little bit more of a boxing groove here in the last couple of rounds, as trainer Tony Morgan has asked him to remember that he has a good jab. Ortiz, for his part, intelligently wants to keep banging away. Hold him. Come on, let's go. Stop the holding. You mentioned yesterday to Ortiz, Larry, that he threw very few jabs against Lamont Peterson. He landed Maybe at the two, end of the day. Yeah. Two jabs in eight in ten rounds. He he doesn't use his jab very much. It's just a a radar uh, weapon. Right, 
him out. Let him out. Let's go. Let him out. That's a hold. You know, it's amazing at this pace that they've been fighting that they're still throwing punches with four pounds all the way through. There's never been any no, lack no, no, of power no, no. in the punches. And especially Berto, which is surprising me, as tired right. as he seemed earlier, he's still punching with four power. But I noticed that Harold Letterman gave yeah. the last round to Berto. And in this round, Berto has been the busier of the two. The fact that he will throw his jab and Ortiz is still trying to load up power punches is giving Berto a chance to win the quiet rounds here. And fans may be surprised to see scorecards winding up fairly even toward the end of the fight when most of the spectacle has been provided by Ortiz. Uh, I, I disagree with Harold on the last round. I have Ortiz winning comfortably. But he's not going to lay back the way he did in the Peterson fight. Now let's see if he gets penalized because that's the second time that he has hit Andre Berto behind the head. But Andre was holding his hand, I think, and forcing him that way. Next time you hit behind the head, I'm going to take a point. You understand that? Okay. Ortega says next time, not this time. Ortiz needs to be careful not to hit Berto behind the head again. Let him out. They're trading shots in close. It looks, uh, the man was over. Berto hasn't been able to pull the trigger no, as right. much as he... Yes, he's taking a little step back a halfway, but he can't throw the right hand. Let's take a look at some highlights from a bout that appeared on the card earlier this evening. The man on the right is Thomas Delerme, or Delerme, I should say, a welterweight prospect from Puerto Rico. You saw the first of his knockdowns there against Harrison Cuello of Dominican Republic. Now watch the counter shot with the left. You don't see it done very better than that. No. And uh, the spectacular knockout in the second round for Delerme keeps him unbeaten, and we will no doubt be seeing more of him in the future. It's all you have to do is box. It's so simple. Listen, listen. That'll come. That'll come. You touch the It doesn't seem that simple to me, Emmanuel. If he just boxes in these last three rounds, if he doesn't do something to assert himself, I'm not sure he can pull this out. No, because. Ortiz is still fighting with his legs, his good bounce, good spring and energy in it, and uh, he's got to try to land that right hand. Well, let's get the numerical drama from Harold and Letterman. Harold, how do you have it so okay, far? Okay, Jim, you guys are all right. 86, 83, six rounds to three, Victor Ortiz. There's no question that Andre Berto has got to do something spectacular in the last three rounds to catch up or to win this fight. Victor Ortiz, the busier guy, landed a hard shots, winning most of those the, the last four or five rounds. Andre Berto is just, you know, not busy enough. Uh, he, he needs one big shot. He's really got to do something spectacular. 86, 83. Oh, oh, There's the shot. Michael Ortega discerns that Ortiz one hit Berto in the one back point. of the head, and now he's going to take a point. I think that's a that's terrible a call. No, he was bending his head down. The guy was doing his punches. Tremendous break for Berto. I th Gets him one point closer on the car. That's the second break Berto has gotten, including the knock, the second knockdown earlier in the fight. You good? You sure you got time? And giving Berto this time is another break. Okay. Go, time in. Break, break. Let him go. All right, listen, you're holding, okay? Now our ticket tells Berto he's holding. Break, break. Break, step back. I do like the way he breaks him up quickly and doesn't let those clinches go on. And now Ortiz seems motivated to try to put the power imprint back on the fight, having had a point taken away. This no doubt is the motivation to try to make the round an even round. Now that you're giving away a point. needs to be certain that he doesn't get too reckless here and walk into another right hand from Berto. Yes, Berto is still punching with full power. But he is 
determined to not let happen what happened in the Peterson fight, where he thought he was winning and all he had to do is box for four or five rounds. It's a mark of how weak Berto's legs are. Very this point difficult for him to pick himself up. Let's go. Break. Step back, step back. Watch and his legs are that badly weak, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, maybe he's not punching at full power anymore. No, he still punches Break. with full let power. Him out. Let him out. Strong fighter. Let's go. Let's Very go. unusual Stop. man. We should remind everybody. Good left hand by Ortiz. That Berto is ranked only behind Pacquiao and Mayweather in the welterweight division. And that this is the first Looks fight. Looks like there's a new welterweight in town, and his name is Victor Ortiz. And this is the first fight Ortiz has ever fought at this weight. Watch That's right. Side. Watch your head. Fighting like a man possessed against Break. Andre Break. Berto. Let's go. Well, it looks like he evened out hey, that round. Holding. That's too much. That, don't, I worry about it. Yes, I do. That's a point. You said that's a point, man. That's too much holding. You're very good. You're going to beat him. You beat him. Win, you win that round. You're winning. There's two more rounds, Victor. And you will be the world champion. Okay. No se me descuide, Victor. But you have to put shit together. It's not going to come with one punch. It's not. Okay? Gonna it's not going to come with one punch. So you, you, have to, you, have to, you got to be sharp, okay? Sharpness is what's going to do it, okay? Here you see where the point was deducted from Ortiz when he threw a left hand and miss. Berto went down trying to avoid punch, which he should, and here he's hitting him back. And it just went to a situation where I would not have taken a point myself if I was a referee. Now that brings up an interesting discussion, meaning when would you take a point if the guy gets hit in the back of the head? Because well, not if the guy was down holding his head and you purposely, purposely hit him. That was in the Let's midst go. of throwing an exchange of punches. Uh, our shots in the tenth round, Ortiz doubling Berto. 22 out of 54, to 12 out of 31 for Berto. And Ortiz succeeded in evening the round despite having lost the point because of hitting behind the head. That was his mission clearly after the referee's ruling, and he got it done. At least on Harold Letterman's card. Befitting his status, Berto is a overwhelming favorite to retain his title. Right now, before we know what happens for the next five minutes of this fight, he could be an ex champion. Careful, that was close behind the head. Break, let him up, let him Ortiz up. has done much better work to the body, Emmanuel. Yes, he's, he's doing everything perfectly. He doesn't if, if, if even though he would go in and then take a step back, he would be better because they keep colliding. They're going, they're going right together. If he would just move forward and then pull back for a minute and have Berto off balance. Berto looks really out of it right now. This is the way Berto looked in rounds one and two when he couldn't hold off the charging Ortiz and wound up against the ropes trying to help or trying to get the ropes to help him stand up. Referee looks like he he would stop the fight if Ortiz would land another. And Ortiz couple of is doing points. just what he should. He's working that right up a cut, right up through the center. Berto glanced at his corner. He's looking at the corner. He's been an looking odd at look. and he's looking at the clock a lot often too on the wall over here. I've been watching for the last four rounds. A minute still to go in the eleventh round, and Ortiz is having his way again. <laughs> Berto trying to change the fight with one big right hand. Break! Let him out! Let him out! Step back, step back, step back. Break. Step back, step back. Ortiz is going to make a lot of fans with this performance. Fans love sluggers, and he's fighting like a full on slugger. Well, they promoted him a little too early as the next Oscar before the Maidana fight, the next Mexican American who would be a big box office attraction. It's taken him this long to come back. But he's grown and into fulfill his promise step back, step back. through 11 rounds. Step back, step back. But he's grown into his boxing manhood tonight. <laughs> 11 rounds in the books. 
and Victor Ortiz is on the threshold of a stunning upset which will totally refurbish his image in the sport. You understand me? You're winning by five points. Four or five points, Victor. You're winning the fight. You're going to be the world champion. You are the world champion. You know what that means? Now, we, now, listen, now we're going to find what you're made of, okay? Listen, we can't hold. We can't take a chance of a point. We got to go to work and try and get his ass out. You understand? Push him back and come. Keep ballsy. Ballsy and gutsy. This is the last round. Inside you, what you have inside you, okay? But you got to make him believe that now, okay? Well, I think Tony Morgan has the right idea. He's asking Andre Berto to knock Ortiz out. Berto only threw 19 punches in the 11th round. Danny Garcia has been largely a cheerleader throughout the fight for his fighter, Victor Ortiz. And that's pretty much all he's had to do because Victor has been bringing it in every single round. Well, sportsman like Hug to begin the 12th. Ortiz yeah. right now, I think, is the welterweight champion of the WBC. Question is, can he hold it for one more round? You know, to, to tell your fighter that he's up by five points or a major margin like that, I would not do that. That's the that's choice of the uh, corner, What should but I would Ortiz not do be doing now? I would just tell him, just listen, you got to fight one. You know, don't take any chances, but still keep fighting the fight you're doing. I don't know, you're I don't know if he fighting. knows how to fight without taking chances. At this point, Emmanuel, he has, he has created for himself a style which is about risk. And he just got hit with two big shots by Andre Berto, or right and the left, and that's why he's holding on right now. Berto had a moment. I think it surprised a lot of people, most of all, how well he's taken some of Ortiz's big punches, even though he went down twice. Another big left hand for Ortiz. Berto eating that shot the way he has eaten them all night long. Minute and a half to go. Ninety seconds left for Berto to try to rescue his position in the welterweight division. Victor Ortiz has a wonderful smile. He has a magical backstory. There were some in the past several months who wondered whether he really had the commitment, the soul, the heart of a fighter. No one will question his heart after tonight. No one will question Bruno neither. Step back, step back. It's been a courageous show by both fighters. The stock of both fighters went up. But if the stock of both fighters went up, the stock of Ortiz skyrockets to another stratosphere. And fans will not be able to wait to see him back in the ring. This was excitement. This was war. Barring a stunning reversal on the judges' cards, Victor Ortiz has the victory of a lifetime. We've seen fighters like Klitschko and Lennox Lewis, now Ymir Khan, come back from knockouts. Give me that bell! Give me that bell! And now we have seen Maidana erase the scarlet letter on his back. Ortiz. Uh, sorry, Ortiz. Harold, how'd you score it? 115, 110. Uh, eight rounds for Victor Ortiz, three rounds for Andre Berto, one round even, Jim. All right, now we're going to see significant highlights from the fight, and I miscounted the knockdowns because, frankly, there seemed to be a bushel of them. Round one, down goes Berto 
on big shots by Ortiz in the corner. This is the second trip to the canvas in the round for Berto. The first one was ruled a trip. Round two, Berto gets his on a counter right hand, boom. Ortiz knocked down and the glove holds him back up. Memorable sixth round, all out war between the two fighters. First, Berto knocks Ortiz down with a perfect right hand. And at that moment, it appeared that Berto was in position to reverse the fight. But in the closing seconds of the round, Ortiz knocked Berto back down. And then from that point forward, Berto never seemed to be the same threat to Ortiz again. Ortiz lost a point in the 10th round for hitting behind the head. But because of his general dominance throughout the fight, he winds up with a comfortable margin on Harold Letterman's scorecard, and we assume victory on the other scorecards as well. Though, of course, it isn't official yet. Originally from Garden City, Kansas, now living in the boxing county of Ventura County, California. Sergio Martinez is there. He's there. Trainer Danny Garcia, his trainer. Trainer Robert Garcia, who is uh, training a variety of other fighters. Martinez trained by Gabriel Sarmiento. They're all in Ventura County, where fans will be awaiting Victor Ortiz for a return celebration. And now let's go to ring announcer David Diamante with the scores. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at the MGM Grand at Foxwoods, we go to the judges' scorecards. Clark Sammartino scored this contest 115 to 110. Glenn Feldman scored this contest 114 to 112. And Judge Julie Letterman scored this contest 114 to 111. For your winner, by unanimous decision, and new WBC welterweight champion of the world, vicious Victor Ortiz. A tremendous win for Ortiz. The first professional loss for Berto. A fight which will significantly imprint both careers. And Emmanuel Stewart, Andre Berto had not taken a ton of punishment in his professional career up till tonight. He got walloped in this fight. Yeah, but he passed the test for his durability and his heart, but he just fought a guy who was too sharp, too determined, and the fact that he got hurt in the first round. And I don't believe that Berto recuperated from the first round. As good a boxer as Andre Berto has been, does it surprise you that Victor Ortiz could essentially make him enter a slugfest and then outslug him all the way, winning the fight virtually without ever throwing a jab? Yes. It's a shock, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but nevertheless, it happened. And there's a look at total punches landed. Ortiz landing 134 more punches and throwing 216 more, landing at a 40% connect percentage. That's a sensational performance, particularly when you consider that the 40% connect percentage is architected with very few jabs. 47% of his power punches and just a tremendous performance with his right hook and his left cross. Andre Berto had interestingly good offensive statistics. Ortiz was available to be hit. But from the second round on, Berto's punches were not as effective as those of Ortiz. And here are the punch zone uh, graphic that shows you exactly where the punches landed. 200 shots to the head by Ortiz on Berto as opposed to 132 shots to the head by Berto on Ortiz. And look at the 82 body shots landed by Ortiz as opposed to Berto only landing 15. A giant difference in the fight and perhaps one of the reasons why Berto was staggering and seemingly out of it in the late rounds as Ortiz continued to hammer to the body even when his shots upstairs were no longer landing with the same regularity. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the winner. All right, thank you, Jim. Congra congratulations, Victor. It seemed that you were fighting like a young man possessed, that this was a test that you had a pass for yourself as well as the world. Yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, first off, let me just thank Andre Berto and Team Berto. Uh, to thank you for the opportunity, Berto. It's, uh, it's a pleasure being in there with the world champ, such as yourself. 
Um, I'm just very blessed, Larry. Uh, I listen to my coaches. I fought like a possessed man because that's what the, the world and the crowd of boxing made me. How did the world and the crowd do that to you? Why did they put you in that uh, state of mind? It went as far as everybody always denying me and uh, saying what I, what I am capable of and what I am not capable of. I know what's in my heart, Larry, and uh, I never mean any bad upon anyone. I do work hard for myself, and uh, I try to prove myself just a little bit more than the last time, usually. And uh, I've just been very blessed. I paid attention to Coach Mario, Coach Danny Garcia, and Coach Joe Janikos. All right, all right, let's take a look at the first knockdown in the first round, which set the tempo for the fight. You went out after him and attacked him. Why? Well, I saw that uh, he was vulnerable in uh, fighting inside. Um, he's a great fighter, very powerful, but I didn't fear his power at all. Um, I had no respect for the world champ. I wanted it that bad, though. Uh, I, was, I, I knew that there was a possibility of him connecting me, and you know what? He did connect me, and that was my bad. I didn't listen to my coaches on one occasion. I dropped my left hand, caught me right in the mouth, put me down, but uh, I, uh, I managed to get up, uh, controlled myself, and come back. After the first round, did you feel that you were stronger, quicker, that he was hurt and dazed in the sense that he just never expected? You know, uh, I think I was very highly under underestimated because of the fact that I moved up to 140 to 147, but uh, uh, I have some pretty, uh, a pretty big body, you know, so uh, I, I knew I carried as much power as him, if not more. Uh, I saw my boy Colazzo fight him also. Gave him a lot of trouble. I thought he uh, actually pulled off the victory, but uh, you know, uh, that's just me. Uh, everyone has their own opinion on that, but uh, uh, it, it, I, I saw some, almost, some faults. Does this, you think, finally put Maidana in, 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 the hist in history rather than in current events? You know, that's one <laughs> thing I, don't, I, I can't even answer to you. Matter of fact, who knows, maybe tomorrow it's gonna read something along the lines of Berto was not at Victor's level. <laughs> you know how the media goes. But then again, it should be the other way. Maybe I didn't belong in his level. Well, but let's yeah, take let's, let's take a look at another knockdown. Yes, sir. Um, if we can uh, wind it up here. And this time, it's round right two. <laughs> that was a beautiful right hand by Berto. Is it, <laughs> I was doing break dancing is it fair to say that the experience of Maidana and the experience of the second half of the fight uh, with Peterson, when you slacked off because you thought you won, together was a, a study book for you on how to fight this fight? It definitely was. It definitely was. I knew he was a sleek, tough opposition fighter, and uh, I just took all that into one ball, took everything I needed and everything I didn't need, and threw it all in one bunch and uh, kind of worked on things here and there at the gym. And you know what, not gonna lie, I didn't feel 100% tonight. I failed Coach Danny a few times, more than a few times, and uh, he kind of yelled at me a few, more than a few times as well. Well, uh, sometimes we're perfect with our imperfections. There you go, Larry, <laughs> yes sir. Um, it's customary at this point for, for, the, uh, for me, for everyone to ask, well, do you now want into the Pacquiao sweepstakes. Yes, sir, definitely. I actually talked to Manny Pacquiao earlier, and Manny, thank you very much for your advice, man. Uh, thank you. I what was his that. advice? He said, uh, I'm more powerful than he is. I'm as quick, if not quicker than he is. So uh, just stick to my game plan and listen to my coaches. And thank you, Manny and Freddie. I appreciate your guys' uh, words of thank advice. You. Thank you for a great fight. Hey, thank you, Larry. Thank you. All right. Andre, thank you, brother. Andre. Andre, um, Andre, when he came out as quickly as he did in the first round, what was your impression? What did it just shock you? No, uh, you know, first off, I want to thank God, uh, you know, for this, uh, you know, for this matchup, and and, and I thank him that nobody didn't get hurt tonight. But uh, you know, I knew he was gonna come out strong. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, man, you know, everybody who watches me fight um, and they know how I fight, uh, they know I wasn't, uh, they know that wasn't me in that tonight. But, uh, but uh, you know, Victor Ortiz did a great job. He came did you out recover the... from those, that, those early knockdowns or were your legs gone? Is that why you were laying on the rope so much? No, you know what? Like I said, I wasn't there tonight and it just felt like, uh, 
I mean, just nothing was just falling in place. Um, I mean, uh, you know, when I was on the ropes, he wasn't really hurting me. I kept telling him to come on, but I just, I just couldn't, uh, you know, let my is hands that, loose. Is that because you underestimated him? You didn't think he had the heart to stay in there with you because you as much as said so? No, I mean, um, uh, you know, I was going to, I knew he was going to come out to fight. Um, I mean, like I said, I just wasn't there tonight, and he was, uh, he was just a better man. Is it possible that tonight with this a kind of um, fight thrill, that thrilled people, yeah. that you will get more recognition than you did for all of the fights you won? I mean, maybe from you, uh, <laughs> you know, because you said that you wanted, uh, you know, me to fight in the more exciting fights, but, but uh, you know, but, but uh, you know, nothing just worse than a loss. So I'm just going to take it and, and um, you know, get back in the gym, get better, and, you know, hope we can come back with a rematch. Thank you very much, Andre, for an outstanding fight. I appreciate it. Jim